Hello everyone. Welcome to the first in our series of Celtic webinars for this year. And we're starting with Halloween. Let's just look at our program for the future webinars. Here we go. So today we have trick or treat, Halloween in class, 27th of November, Christmas time, and 2nd of February, Mardi Gras, and the 8th of May, summer is coming. So you've got lots of webinars to look forward to. Is that good? Yeah, I hope so. Okay, so let's go with Halloween. Look, there's the haunted house. Let's go inside. Uh, okay. Hello, would you like to dance with us? Oh no, here we go, walking through the haunted house, haunted house, haunted house, what do you see? I see a witch! <laughs> would you like to have some soup with worms? <laughs> Wow, okay, so that's one of the many videos that you can find on YouTube, our wonderful friend. There are lots of videos regarding Halloween and all the other festivals too. Um, during our webinar, you'll be also seeing material from Celtic Publishing, obviously. And at the end of the webinar, I'll give you, um, you will be able to get the links to all of that material, okay? First of all, I'd like to thank Celtic Publishing for the possibility to have this webinar with you all, um, in particular, uh, Marco Brunel and Francesca Vici, and of course, Francesca Cecchi and Clarissa Copari, our wonderful friends. Okay, so now we can go on. Okay, so any questions you may have, you can ask and my colleagues will take note of everything. And at the end, we'll be able to answer some spe specific questions, okay? Okay, so where does Halloween come from? Um, do you, do you, does, do any of you remember? Do you know? What do you think? Can any of you write down in the chat box where it comes from this festival? Do you know? 
Okay, let's see. Are there some answers coming in, girls? Hmm? No? Nothing? Okay. Well, we celebrate Halloween every year on October 31st. But where does the holiday come from? The holiday originally came from the Celts, who lived in Britain more than 2,000 years ago. So I see some of you are answering, yes? Very good, excellent. Okay, so November 1st was the Celtic feast of Samhain, Old Irish for Summer's End, and it was the most important of the ancient Celtic feasts. They had bonfires and made sacrifices, and they usually celebrated on the evening of October 31st and the, uh, and the day of November 1st. So then, of course, what happened after the arrival of Christianity? Things changed. So, after the arrival of Christianity, this day became All Saints Day. Another name for it is All Hallows Day, and the day before October 31st is called All Hallows Eve, or Halloween for short. Why did the Celts dress in costumes? Do you know? Do you know? Does anyone know the answer? Well, on this day, the people believed that the spirits of the dead came to visit them, so they dressed up as ghosts and evil spirits um, so that they would not be harmed. Okay, so, right. These are some costumes today, modern costumes that children use today, as you can see. Lots of our, our favorite um, characters. So we've got Mickey Mouse. You can also have Minnie Mouse. We've got Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. We can use all kinds of costumes today. Skeletons are popular, as you can see. So are you going to dress up for Halloween, teachers? Are you going to make the children dress up in your class? That would be nice and you can organize a nice Halloween party. Okay, that would be lovely. Okay, so let's take a look. Here we have a couple of pages from one of Celtic Publishing's publications. And this is from, it is from, let's see. Oh dear, it's from Super Wow, yeah? And Super Wow 2, level 2, yeah, Super Wow level 2. And we're looking at Scary Halloween, and we have a song, and we have the keywords, okay? So we have a listen and number activity. So of course our keywords are witch, ghost, cut, pumpkin, owl, bat, skeleton, and monster. So some of these words are in the song. So let's listen to that song. Page 64. <laughs> Scary Halloween. Sing the song. <sighs> Now we're going to watch a nice video where we can see how to make a pumpkin lantern. Okay, so let's look at that one. Make a pumpkin lantern. You need green, orange and brown card glue, a pencil, a white wax crayon, scissors, 
a stapler. Cut a piece of orange card, then fold it in half lengthwise. Make some parallel cuts along the fold with the scissors. Then open the card and join the short edges together to form a cylinder. Staple the two edges of the card. Now cut two strips from the orange card and staple them onto one end of the lantern. Now cut off a strip from the green card and staple it onto the orange cylinder. This is the handle of the lantern. Now cut two strips from the orange card and staple them onto one end of the lantern. Draw two eyes and a mouth on the black card, then cut them out. Glue them onto the lantern. Now your pumpkin lantern is ready. Oops. Make a pumpkin lantern. You need green. Okay. Okay, so that was really nice. That's just one simple idea for making a pumpkin lantern. Um, there are lots of useful websites where you can find lots of things to make for Halloween. At the end, of, you will be able to find links to lots of other material, okay? Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so as you can see, during Halloween, pumpkins are very important. And we call them jack-o'-lanterns. And the tradition of the jack-o'-lantern um, was brought into America by the Irish immigrants. So they carved pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns, but the original jack-o'-lanterns in Ireland were not pumpkins, because they did not exist in Ireland. They um, carved turnips, and they carved them on All Hallows' Eve, and they placed an ember in them to ward off evil spirits. This was the what the the turnip looked like. And this one obviously has a candle in this. Now, I grew up in Scotland um, as a child. We used turnips because we didn't have pumpkins. So we used turnips in Scotland. And I remember my dad carving the turnip for me and putting a candle inside. And we would sit it on our window, on our windowsill, to ward off evil spirits. So that was really cool. Okay, so here we have a little rhyme. Pumpkin time is here again. Time to play trick or treat. Pumpkin time is here again. Our spooky friends will meet. The costumes we have on. Monsters, ghosts and goblins too. See the costumes we have on. Hear us all shout. Woo! Okay, that's nice. That's from the web and you can find a link to where I found that. Um, later, okay. So, okay, and this is another little one I found on the web, which is really nice. And I've done it in class with children, and it's nice. Um, five children can sit on the floor, and they can do the actions. So, five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, "Oh my, it's getting late." The second one said, "There are witches in the air." The third one said, but we don't care. The fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Ooh, went out the light, the wind, whoa. And out went the lights. And five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. In class, I did this with the children, five children sitting on the floor. 
and they rolled out of sight and it was really nice and they loved this activity. So I'll give you also a link to where I found that later, okay? So in the past, they also had the tradition of giving food to the spirits. So later they gave the food to poor people and this is where the term trick or treat comes from. Although I must tell you that in Scotland, we didn't use this term when I was a child, okay? Um, we used to you, we used to sing a little song, which I couldn't find anywhere, um, couldn't find a recording of it anywhere. And it was, it goes like this. I'll dance and I'll sing and I'll do anything if you'll give me my Halloween. So we used to sing this, we used to go around people's doors and we used to sing it. And the people would decide if they wanted us to sing a song or do something particular, um, okay? And that was what the trick comes from, okay? So, and so we used to sing that little song. Um, and then they would possibly give us some apples or nowadays sweets. And you can find buckets like these or you can create them yourselves and keep the sweets in them for the children. Or you can even have them in class for your class. And this is another idea of a round pumpkin type container with lots of sweets um, or we could make some lovely cakes now this one is a pumpkin cake okay with chocolate covering and these instead i made these with carrots and chocolate chips okay so also later you'll find the recipes for those okay so chocolate chip carrot cakes for Halloween, if you can't choose pumpkins, okay? Instead, this one is lovely pumpkin sponge with chocolate covering. So, but I'll give you the, the recipes in the container at the end, okay? So, and of course, this is lovely, some nice healthy option, okay, oranges. And we've got our jack-o'-lantern drawn on them with just with some black, with a black felt pen. So that's nice, it's something different. And so we would go around the doors in Scotland and we'd sing our little song and they would possibly give us um, some of these things, okay? So today this still, ha still happens in Scotland, for example. I can speak for Scotland because that's where I'm from and people still do it today. So, and as again, the little song is, I'll dance and I'll sing and I'll do anything if you give me my Halloween. Okay, because we used to say, can you give me my Halloween, please? That was what we used to say. Okay, we didn't say trick or treat. And so they would say, okay, sing me a song or do something for me. Okay, so, okay, so let's move on. Okay, so this is another section from, um, now this is, this is from Jamboree, and it's from Jamboree 3. Yeah, Jamboree book 3, um, two pages. 74 and 75. So here we have a listening and reading and nice and simple. Halloween is on the 31st of October. It's an old tradition. Today children wear masks and costumes of ghosts, witches, monsters and vampires. They knock on doors and shout trick or treat. Treats and cakes. Uh, treats and cakes are sweets. Trick, trick or jokes are jokes. Okay. So treats are cakes and sweets and tricks or jokes, okay, or songs or something. Right, on Halloween night, people put a carved pumpkin in the windows. It's a jack-o'-lantern, okay? So, read and tick, true or false. So, nice and simple. And on the other side, we have jack-o'-lantern photo gallery. So, here we've got some, some pumpkins with carvings of owls, skeleton, ghosts, okay? and scary witches, just like me, yeah, okay. And now we've got a nice chant here. I have a little pumpkin, I gave it two big eyes, I cut a nose out and a great mouth that smiles. Jack-o'-lantern, jack-o'-lantern, you are such a scary sight. You sit there at the window, looking out of sight, out of night, out at night, sorry, looking out at night, okay? So that's nice. Um, also, I want to show you here at this point another video. So if we just go out, 
And okay, we've got this one, which is Maker Post. Make a ghost. You need a sheet of paper, white tissue paper, black card, ribbon, a stapler, scissors, glue, a pencil, a white crayon. Draw a ghost shape on the paper. Draw the eyes and the mouth on the black card. Cut them out. Glue the eyes and the mouth onto the ghost shape. Staple the ribbon onto the top of the ghost. Cut out some long strips of tissue paper and staple them onto the bottom of the ghost. Now, your ghost is ready. Okay, um, I just want to tell you that the Make a Ghost video is actually from Super Wow Volume 1, okay? Um, and so I just wanted to fit it in. I thought it was nice. Okay, so, and I, as I said, at the end you can find all of these resources in our box, okay? Good. So, let's move on. Okay, here we have a nice page from Festival Factory. I suppose a lot of you know Festival Factory. So, this is again regarding trick or treat. Trick or treat, trick or treat. Give me something good to eat. Chocolate, sweets, or ice cream. Yummy, yum. It's Halloween. Trick or treat, trick or treat. Give me something good to eat. I would also use the magic word please, however, if I go around doors asking for these things. Okay, so let's teach the children to always say please. Yeah? Okay, and thank you, of course. Okay, so that's from Festival Factory, and that's also nice. And the children also, they love colouring this in as well. So it's a nice activity. Okay, so as we've seen, trick or treat, very popular. Some children at a house get better to go in groups if they're going around tricking and treating, okay? Better to go in groups and not alone. It's much better, safer, okay? So... Okay, so Jack-o'-lantern, that's him again. Lots of different um, versions of Jack-o'-lantern. Yeah, and this is a nice Jack-o'-lantern costume that could easily be made. Yeah, also this one. Okay, and this is a famous Jack-o'-lantern from the famous film. Do you remember which film he's from? I wonder if you remember. The Nightmare before Christmas. I'm sure you knew it because that's very popular. Okay, so that's a famous Jack from that film. Okay. Okay, now here we've got a recipe from Festival Factory for pumpkin biscuits. So, what do we need? We need two and a half cups of flour, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of bread crumb, oh sorry, bicar bicarbonate of soda, yeah? Three or four cups of cooking oil, one egg, two cups of brown sugar, one cup of a mashed cooked pumpkin, two cups of raisins, some butter. Okay, so this is what we have to do. Preheat the oven to 200 degrees centigrade. Butter the baking paper. In a big bowl, sift together the flour, the salt, and the bicarbonate. Then, in another bowl, put the egg, oil, brown sugar, and pumpkin. Beat well with a wooden spoon. Add the flour mixture and the raisins 
to the pumpkin mixture and stir well. Drop spoonfuls of the mixture onto the baking paper. Make the biscuit, sorry, bake the biscuits for 20 minutes. And that is inside Festival Factory, this particular recipe. So here we have some photographs of the ones that I made, okay? These ones also have um, red currants in them. These are just plain with no fruit inside them at all, okay? Just pumpkin, okay? And, okay, we can, we can change the shape. We can make them very flat and shape them like pumpkins, yes? And that makes them look even more Halloween-y, okay? So, but these recipes, as I said, that one is from Festival Factory. The other recipes, you'll find them in our box of tricks, okay? On our website. Okay, so, okay, Halloween has changed a lot since its origins. New people have brought new traditions and changed the old ones. So, what tradi traditions do you have at Halloween? Can you tell me about some of your traditions that you have in Italy, that you have adopted or that you have created in Italy? Hmm? Can you tell me something? Um, write something in the chat box hmm? if you have anything to share. Hmm? And what do you think Halloween will be like in another 2,000 years? Do you think we will still be celebrating Halloween? Do you think it will be the same? What do you think will be different? Um, if you have any ideas, write them in the chat box. Okay? That would be nice to hear your ideas, okay? So, my colleagues can tell me, any ideas, ladies? Yes, they make biscuits. Wonderful. Children go to a shop to just to buy sweets. Mm -hmm. They go treats or treats. Okay, yes. Wonderful. So they do lots of things, just like what they do in the UK, for example. Uh, I was in the UK two weeks ago and the shops were already full of Halloween sweets and Halloween uh, gadgets. That's, I got my hat, I've got my little ghost, yeah, and my spider ring, okay, and I got some spider webs behind me, I don't know if you can see them, and a skeleton, a wonderful skeleton witch, I picked them up, and you can pick up lots of things even, I suppose, in the Euro shop in Italy. Lots of gadgets, I got them in the pound shop, yeah, in the UK. So, and other traditions, any other traditions, girls? Anything different? No, they just make the biscuits. Okay. Biscuits according to the region. Okay, so what do you think Halloween will be like in another 2,000 years? Any ideas? Will we still be celebrating Halloween? What do you think? Hmm? What do you think? No? You don't have any ideas? Think about it. And if you come up with anything, um, you can let me know later at the question time. Okay? So don't worry. Just think about it. Okay? Technology. More technological, mm. yeah. Halloween in space, what about that, yeah? <laughs> Halloween on the moon, yeah? Let's wait and see. Mm. Okay, so here we've got a nice um, um, jigsaw reading text, again from Festival Factory, about the history of, of Halloween. So we've got four pictures and we've got four pieces of text. So, and the children, we, we can cut out the text and the children maybe in groups they could be in groups of four or in pairs um, and they could you could make the photocopy of of the the worksheet um, you can cut out the question the text parts and give them to the students to match with the pictures so we've got around 600 bc the celts arrived in britain 
between 1800 and 1860, poor Irish immigrants brought Halloween to the United States. The Celts lived in Central Europe a long time ago. In medieval times, people considered the 31st of October a night full of evil spirits like ghosts and witches. So it's a nice, simple um, story about the history of Halloween. So that's a nice activity that the children can work on. Do you like that? What do you think? Is it nice? Hmm? I think it's nice. Anyway, okay. So, okay, let's look at this nice, these two nice pages. And again, these are from Super Wow Level 3. Okay. And Halloween fun. Okay. So it's a listening and a reading. Again, what we've said before, it's the same type of reading. And this is for book three, so level three. And then at the top, we have a chant. So let's say the chant. First two eyes, then a nose, then a mouth with teeth in rows. Oh, oh, spooky sight, jack-o'-lantern in the night. Okay, and we've got a couple of riddles here, some riddles, very simple, we've got three riddles here. Read and answer. I sleep all day and I'm awake at night. Who am I? Hmm, I'm a, oh dear, can you guess? Next one, I fly on a broomstick on Halloween night. Who am I? I'm a, yes, okay. And I've got wings and I sleep upside down. What am I? Oh, creepy, it's horrible, I don't like them. I'm a, okay, so those are nice and simple for the children. And here we have another craft, okay make a Halloween monster. So let's go and take a look at this video. Make a Halloween monster. You need colored card, black card, black crepe paper, scissors, glue, Cut some strips of card. Glue the ends, then fold the strips one over the other, like a concertina. Then glue the two ends together. Now you have a small square. Open it out to form a pop-up leg of your monster. Make three more pop-up legs. Now, draw your monster face on another colored card and cut it out. Draw some paws and cut them out. Draw some claws on the black card. Cut them out and glue them onto the paws. Glue the paws onto the ends of the pop-up legs. Draw the eyes, eyebrows, nose and mouth on the black card. Cut them out and glue them onto the mask. Glue the pop-up legs onto the mask too. Cut the black crepe paper into strips. Glue the strips onto the mask to make the hair. Now, your Halloween monster is ready. Okay. Well, that's very nice. I like that. What do you think? Do you like it? It's very simple to make as well. And I think the kids would love it. Okay. Right. Let's move on. 
Okay, another page from Festival Factory, a nice Halloween Pictionary, so very simple. And of course, you can do lots of things with this. The younger children can simply colour um, the pictures and you can um, le learn and then revise the vocabulary with them. You can play memory games, for example. Um, you can, um, I don't know, you can think of some other ideas and you can tell me, okay? What do you think? What would you, what could you do? I think there are lots of activities you could do with this page. And that's from Festival Factory. Okay. And another, this is really cool. I've done this with my teachers at a workshop. Halloween dance. It's really nice. Everyone in a circle. Yeah. And we all stand around and we get in a circle and we've got our hats on. So big and round the witch's hat. Dance the witches and their black cats. First go up, then go down. Lots of witches all around. First go left, then go right. Enjoy the dance. It's Halloween night. Now I've done that with teachers in a workshop and they loved it. We had great fun and afterwards we made some costumes, some hats from crepe paper and some very simple costumes that they used again at Halloween. So that was nice. And again from Festival Factory. Okay, and another Halloween quiz from Festival Factory. This is very nice for numbers, for arithmetic, for counting. Okay, so here we've got jack-o'-lanterns again. There are 12 jack-o'-lanterns, but three disappear. How many jack-o'-lanterns are there? So the children subtract. Oh, there are, and they put the answer. Okay, next we've got there are 16 witches but 11 fly away. How many witches are there? Again, subtract and put the answer. Okay, etc, etc. So we've got jack-o'-lanterns, witches, bats, okay, nine and sweets because we've got nine sweets and three bats. How many sweets are there for each bat? And so we have to do a division. Yeah, so very nice. There are five monsters. Each monster has three eyes. How many eyes are there all together? So we have to multiply and get the answer. Okay, and there are eight ghosts. Another three ghosts arrive. How many ghosts are there now? So an addition. Okay, so that's nice for numbers and also just for colouring if you like, and for reading, okay? Again, Festival Factory. Again, Festival Factory, Halloween riddles. So similar to what we saw on the other pages, but just that there are more of them. So this word begins with J. It's a pumpkin with a scary face. What is it? Okay. And the word begins with S. It is an animal that's got eight legs. What is it? Here it is. I've got a ring like this. Okay, good, etc, etc. We have W, we have A, we have G, and we have B. Okay, so that's nice for recycling the vocabulary that the children have already learnt. Okay, so that's a nice one. Again, Festival Factory. Okay, now, there are lots of very useful websites that you can that you can go to. For example, we've got the wonderful British Council Learning English Kids, which is excellent. And you can find lots of material for Halloween there and also a nice video. Of course, YouTube is a wonderful uh, font of resources. Okay, you can find lots of videos there. Okay. Um, and DLTK, which is nice, it's dltk-teach.com, the website, and there you can find lots of wonderful material to, to print. 
you can print in color, you can print in black and white. If you print in black and white, then the children can color for you. Or if you want to print things in color, you can. And there are lots of printables. You go to, you click on, for example, Halloween printable activities, okay? And you can find lots. And this one in particular, um, it are, these are, this is from the mini books section, okay? Five Little Pumpkins, the ones that we saw in our rhyme, okay? And it's the same rhyme, but it's divided into a mini book, okay? So again, it's the same five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late, etc., etc. And I, I've put it here in color for you. If you want, you can get it in black and white, okay? And there are lots of other resources, calendars, um, uh, bingos, bingos, okay, and uh, lots of other printables that you can pick up, okay? Here we've got teacher vision. Some um, Here you can find also some worksheets and also videos, okay? And this is a, a video that I picked out on YouTube. Um, it's a dark, oh no, sorry, again it's our pumpkins. It's 10 spooky pumpkins. Okay, so that's a nice video too if you want to check it out. Okay, so again, at the end, you will, there will be a place for you to go on our website where you can pick up all the material. Okay, so good. Okay, some books. Um, this is a beautiful book, Room on the Broom. And of course, Winnie the Witch, probably more famous in Italy. But they're excellent. And you can also find um, a YouTube video for Room, and, Room on the Broom. So let's check it out. Mm, okay, it's coming. And of course, there are lots of other books that you can check out. Mm. Okay. Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. Read by Josie Lawrence. <laughs> the witch had a cat and a very tall hat, and long ginger hair which he wore in a plait. How the cat purred, and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. Okay, I'm not going to spoil it anymore for you. So you can watch that with your children in class if you like. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for you if you don't know this story. Um, I suppose lots of you will because it's a very famous book. Um, the other one, of course, is Winnie the Witch, which is also really famous. And there's also the YouTube video, okay? So you can check that out because we don't really have time today. There are lots of stories that you can use. And a particular favorite of mine is The Little White Cat by Andrew Wright. And it's wonderful. Um, I don't, we won't have time today, but I've used this story a lot in my workshops and the teachers and the children love it, okay? So, but I will put this story with a lesson plan for you to use into the repository with the material, okay? So don't worry, you can have that as well, okay? So, there we go, that's Halloween finished. Thank you for your attention. Now, do you have any questions for me? Okay, let's see. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, hmm. 
Right. Um, okay, games to be played at Halloween in class? Yes, class five. Yes, uh, apple bobbing is absolutely wonderful. And in Scotland, we did this when I was a child. So you just need a big basin full of water and lots of apples. And the children have to go down on their knees with their hands behind their backs. And they have to catch the apples with their teeth. And it's not so easy. And another way that this could be done, we can hang the apples on a sort of a washing line um, on strings. And the children can, again, with their arms tied behind their backs, they have to try to catch an apple with their teeth. So that's a fun game, yeah. And also fun games, you can create role plays. Um, the monster and the, the horrible witch or the, the skeleton and the jack-o'-lantern. You can create lots of, of role plays. But in the, in from, in the uh, material, in the repository at the end, I'll give you some other ideas of games that you can play, okay? Um, another question we have here, is it possible to have more songs for Halloween? MP3, YouTube links, absolutely. In the repository, you will find, I will give you links, okay, to particular um, songs, okay? And something else, yep. Could you suggest other Halloween stories? Of course, I'll give you links again in our repository, so you can pick them up there, okay? And uh, of course, everyone who has taken part in the webinar um, will be sent a wonderful certificate, yes, of participation, yeah, for joining in on our webinar, okay? So, um, yes, I will put the answer to those questions into our um, repository. So, any other questions, ladies? No? No more? Okay. So, okay, so I just want to say regarding Halloween, um, okay, all the material will be found at www.raffaelloformazione.it, okay? Um, and of course, you can follow all of us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on everything, yeah? And um, of course, we have our official uh, Facebook page of, of Raffaello, Grupo Raffaello, and we also have our Celtic publishing page. And of course, there's my page, which is uh, Guida per l'insegnante, Teacher's Guide. So if you know me, you know it, okay? And a wonderful page that I follow on Facebook, which is called um, English Primary School. And I'm going to put that into the links um, on our page at the end, okay, on our, into our repository, okay? And of course, the next appointment for our, uh, our next uh, festival webinar, let's say, um, will be on the 28th of November, when we will be preparing for Christmas. Okay, so um, now, thank you for your intention regarding Halloween. Now, we have a surprise for you. We're going to move on to another um, topic, okay? And we're going to look at a new um, wonderful textbook that we have just released. It's a test for the best, written by our wonderful colleague, Claudia Badioli, okay? Um, and it's regarding the Invalsi test, which is such a hot subject at the moment for all of you, yeah? So, I'm just going to tell you something about Test for the Best. Okay, so um, Test for the Best is um, a 64 page book, okay? And it was specifically, specifically written for the preparation and practice of the famous Invalsi test in, in English for primary school, okay? So the book has basically two sections. The first section covers all the topics which the children have studied in the first five years of primary school, okay? So, first of all, let's look at the this wonderful um, map of our book, okay? So, we can see some of our pages here. It shows us that there is a um, revision of vocabulary, re reading and writing activity, listening activities, 
um, speaking activities as well. Okay, and then strategies on how to face up to this test. Okay, uh, little tips like this in boxes. Okay, and some okay reading and writing tips as well, listening tips as well. So it's very nice, very useful. So as I said, it's divided into two sections. The first section is a revision of what the children have done in um, over the five years in primary school. Okay, so it could be used um, for revision uh, or simply for consolidation and uh, in order to prepare the students gradually, okay, for the, the test, okay, um, for the actual test. So um, the second section, okay, first of all, let's look at this section, let's see. So here we've got, for example, the family tree. So, and here we're looking at reading and writing the names of the people in the family, okay. So we've got this presentation by this girl, Eva, and she's showing the photo of her family and the sentences. So this is a photo of my birthday party. This is my dad, Bill, and this is my mum, Lucy. Look at the boy on the bike. He's my brother, Mark. I've got a sister, Kim. She's the girl next to me. My grandma is under the tree. Her name's Anna. The man with the camera is my granddad, Sam. Look at our cat. He's under the table and his name is Milk. Okay, so here we're looking at the children filling in the various um, names, okay? Reading and naming the people. And then the next page, look at the picture and complete. So again, we are, they are remembering who's who, okay? And they're filling in the blanks. And they're read, read the questions, listen and write a name or a number. So again, they are revising all their competences and skills that they have acquired over the period of time at the primary school. So here we have, um, in, in section two, we have, we have some practice tests, okay? And this is really important because um, it enables the children to really practice um, what the test could be like. I mean, of course, we're not exactly sure what the ministry has in mind, um, but we feel that this is a good, um, a good exercise for the children to prepare for the test, okay? So this is um, what we would say um, a sample of the test. Now, of course, this book wasn't um, written um, the, mainly for commercial purposes. Um, we, we feel that, that the book is a real help to the teachers in, in, the, in preparing the children the best way they can for this test. Of course, we don't know exactly what the ministry has in mind, but anyway, these are very useful exercises um, for consolidating the children's competences and skills that they have acquired. Okay, so okay, so we've got read read the email, which is a very good competence, and complete the table. Okay, look and listen, write the names. So this is listening, and comprehension and filling in, okay? So um, it's a very um, nice, um, useful uh, textbook, okay? And it is in line, obviously, with the, the Common European Framework um, indications, A1 level. And uh, so it's, uh, we feel it's a very good tool to help the teacher to to help the children with this test, okay? So it's there's also um, the teacher's guide, yeah? So which comprises of 13 chapters, let's say, okay? And all of the listening um, texts are here, 
for the teacher to follow, okay? Listening um, tracks, okay? So we feel it's a very complete um, and useful um, book. Now, if you would like to have um, uh, a webinar specifically for um, using our book for this um, test for the best, for test for the best in Valsi, um, please write to us and let us know because if, if you'd be interested, then we would organize a webinar for this specifically, okay? Um, so, okay, and remember anyway, in any case, ask your local distributor for your free copy, okay? Don't forget to do that, okay? And then so that you can be testing for the best, okay? In your classes, okay? So, um, I think, uh, I think that's it really. Um, um, let's see. Uh, I think we've finished really. Okay, of course in the teacher's guide it's obviously complete with all the answers to the tests as well. Okay, um, and as I said before we have our tape scripts and everything. Okay, so it's, uh, it's, it's really complete we feel. Okay. For, for preparing the children. Do you have any questions regarding this? Um, if you have any questions at all regarding anything, we can deal with them now. Hmm? Okay. So, no questions. Okay. Is something coming in? No. Okay. So. Um, I think we can go back to where we were before, okay, right, okay, okay, so, um, any questions at all, write them in the box and my colleagues are going to deal with them, okay? Okay, um, now I'm going to tell you the story of the little white cat, yeah, by Andrew Wright. Is that okay? Do we have time for that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so, once upon a time, there was a little white cat. And she came from a very big family because she had six brothers and sisters. But... The little white cat's mother and father and brothers and sisters were all black. The little white cat didn't realize that she wasn't black like them. She believed that she was like them. She didn't know that she was white. She didn't know she was different. So, when the little white cat grew up, one day she said to her mum, Mum, I want to go out into the world. I want to go and find a job. And her mum said, Ah, what do you want to be? And the little white cat said, I want to be a witch's cat. Mm, that's nice, said her mum. Okay, please come back and visit us soon. So the little white cat said bye-bye to her family and went off. So she walked and she walked and she walked and eventually she found a witch. So she went to, to the witch and she said, Hello witch, I want to be your cat. And the witch looked at her and said, No, you can't be my cat. Witches, cats are black, you are white, go away. The poor little white cat, she couldn't understand, she was sad, but she didn't lose heart and she walked on. So she walked and she walked and she walked and in the end she met another witch. Hello witch, have you got a cat? And the witch said, no, I haven't got a cat. The little white cat said, well, I'll be your cat. And the witch looked at her and said, no, you won't. 
Witches cats are black. You are white. Go away. The poor little white cat. She was really sad and confused. And she was very hungry. And she was very lonely. She had no friends. She had no money. She had nothing to eat. But she walked on. Soon she saw a little cottage. And there was a chimney sweep sitting outside the cottage. So the little white cat went over to the chimney sweep. And the chimney sweep looked at the little white cat and said, Oh, you poor little cat, you look so sad. Come and sit by me. Would you like something to eat? And the little white cat said, Oh, yes, please. I'm so hungry. So the chimney sweep gave the little white cat a sandwich. The little white cat ate the sandwich and she felt better. And she said to the chimney sweep, mm, I'm looking for a witch. I want to be a witch's cat. And then she noticed that the chimney sweep had a sack in front of him, a sack of soot. The little white cat looked curiously at the sack of soot. And then she put a paw into the sack and she took it out. <gasps> And it was black. Mm. So she put another paw in. <gasps> Took it out. It was black too. So the little white cat jumped into the suit and wriggled around, jumped out. She was completely black. And she said to the chimney sweep, <gasps> Oh, no, I'm black. That's good because I want to find a witch. I want to be a witch's cat. And the chimney sweep looked and he said, oh, you are so lucky. This is a witch's cottage. If you go to the front of the cottage, the witch is sitting in her rocking chair. So the little white cat, the little black cat, walked around to the front of the cottage and saw the witch. And the witch was sitting rocking in a rocking chair with her eyes closed in the warm sunshine. And the little white cat walked along and said to the witch, Hello, witch. Have you got a cat? And the witch said, No, I haven't got a cat. And the little white cat said, Oh, well, I can be your cat. And the witch said, Oh, that's wonderful. Jump up on my lap. So the little white cat jumped onto the witch's lap and was so happy. And the witch began to stroke the little white cat, the little black cat, and said, oh, oh, you're so soft and so nice. What a pity I can't see you because I'm blind. Oh, and so the little white cat, the little black cat, lived happily ever after with the witch. Okay, so I'll give you all of the story, lesson plan and everything, in the repository okay and that's a nice story it's not really um totally connected to halloween but it's very nice because it's got the witch and the cat etc so it's still a very nice story and it's wonderful because it's all about diversity and inclusion okay so another wonderful story i heard about was about a blind cat instead so i'm going to put that the link to that also in the repository okay and okay, all I can say is to you, thank you for coming. Thank you for your attention. And I hope to see you soon on the 28th of November. I hope to see you. Okay, so bye.